welcome back to my channel. I am Artesia Stamps. And if you have not already done so, please, please, please go ahead and click like and subscribe to this channel and click the bell button to see when I upload videos. So let's hop right into it. The things they just don't tell you about liposuction, tummy tuck, and breast lift and or augmentation. Let me talk to you about this for a second. So I decided to be comfortable today because I'm actually not feeling 100 today. I have my good days and I have my bad days. And today is a one out of 10. I would say today is maybe a, a seven on the not feeling too great scale. So I'm up and I'm down. So full transparency, right? This is not for the week. I'm going to be honest. It's just not. Um, your body goes through so much. Um, not only does it go through so much, but emotionally to keep everything going, it's a bit much. So I try to make sure that I'm being as honest as I possibly can with y'all because I don't want anybody getting a tummy tuck or any kind of plastic surgery and thinking everything is all rainbows because it is not. Let me just be honest, it's just not. So hopping right in. The things they don't tell you, and I think I made a video about this before, is the lipo itch. Um, it, that's really a thing and up until this point um i've been itching like a whole lot and they say it's a good thing because you're healing but i think my itching is starting to subside and i haven't been I've, i haven't taken any like hydroxyzine or any antihistamines so i've been pretty good so my my, my lipo itch is actually subsiding so that's good the itching of the incisions i knew that when your incision is healing it itch but in certain places the itching has heightened right so like under my breasts for the most part the stitches are dissolving and around my nipple it's dissolving but along the crevices of here they're taking a little bit longer to dissolve and they poke they it's very uncomfortable so i guess i could have done my research to to kind of get a good feel but i think that's something that i would have wanted to know is you know how these itchness how these how my breast stitches are gonna feel you know not the doctor's fault not me as fault it's just my fault for not researching you know it'd be like that sometimes so that's what they don't tell you i have noticed that Sometimes you can lose the color. It could be because maybe the breast is still super tight. And so maybe it may cause some, I don't want to say discoloration because that's not what I'm going for, but the nipple, the areola. So the areola TMI can change colors. Your areola may have been light before and after breast augmentation, it you know, or lift, it may be darker. You know, that's literally the gist of it. So your areola may not be the same color as when you went in and when you came out. It's just, that's just one of those things. Or it could be one of those things where the color comes back. It depends on how your body reacts. You know, you just never, you'll just never, never know. Um, also, you, if you're getting a breast augmentation lift or implants or whatever the case may be, if they're detaching your, your nipple in any way, you know, when you come out of surgery, I'm trying to brace myself. When you come out of surgery, the nerves are deadened, but they very much so come alive when you very least expect it. And I'm not being funny, but I was in Hobby Lobby and you know i've been cool before and my my breasts never really reacted to it but last saturday in hobby lobby 
um yeah they woke up and it was like the pain and now y'all heard me say before that i have never experienced pain with my breast only discomfort a little bit but in hobby lobby when i walked in i was like it's a little chilly in here Oof, and i started feeling kind of like the shivers when my body woke up out of nowhere my breast felt it my nipples hardened and the pain was like pricks of everything. I mean, I can't even make this stuff up. It was like, oh my gosh. And so it was like, pew, 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 pew. I mean, the pain was like, what is going on? I've been nipple been cut off and sew back on and breast cut and push back up. No pain whatsoever. But when those nerves came back, it was like, oh my gosh. And then I haven't felt this in a while and this could be a one-off and just for me, but there were children crying in Hobby Lobby. I breastfed. Anyone that knows how this feels can attest to what I'm saying. The baby started to cry and my breast started to trickle. And I was like, I haven't felt that in 13 years why my ducks are dried up what is going on i mean it got to a point where i had to physically leave out of hobby lobby I told my daughter listen i'm gonna sit in the car check yourself out and then um i'm gonna see you out here because i'm cold and the kids are crying and i just going i just can't do that right now so just know that your breasts will wake up when you least expect it okay and the pain that you feel it ain't a hydrocodone in the world that's gonna keep you from feeling the pain because it come on when you least expect it. True story. Um, fat necrosis is a thing. So I was laying in bed and I always feel my breasts to make sure that things are developing correctly. And I noticed that there was a knot here, right here. Now, right, right here, there was a knot right there we go right here you don't want to know what i thought that was i started freaking out so i went to my massage therapist and she's like no 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 there is is there is a communication of limps right here though i'm sorry noise and that noise is full and so once that noid is full, just press down on that noid to kind of, you know, empty it out. You know, your lymph nodes are like little sponges, for real. And to empty your lymph nodes so that they can, ex so they can receive more fluid, you need to just, you know, push on them a little bit. And just real light, not hard, just light. And empty those guys out and just, mas and just massage. Because anything up here is going to be going... You know, anything in this area here is going to be going to those noids so that we can carry the lymph out, you know, out. Um, I learned a whole lot, trust me, about it. So I'm not, a, I'm not a therapist, but I know enough to be dangerous. I do self-massage myself um, every now and again. So I've learned to massage navel down, massage down into the groin area and activate those noids and empty them out because your noids are like little peas but if they have enough liquid in them you know they can be like little m ms they can be kind of big so just push down so that your limps can not limps geez, so the noids can accept more fluid so that's just that's just me um rabbit trail but i do massage myself people don't tell you about you know the lumps that you may feel in your noise almost like when you feel annoyed here You'd be like, man, my noises, my, my lip notes are kind of, uh, you know, swollen. They got fluid in them, so just, just massage them, get them right. That's it. Also, they don't tell you about fat necrosis going back to that. That is a thing. And that's what I thought I had. So I thought this was fat necrosis here because that is when um, you have fatty tissue that is damaged from breast surgery, um, radiation things of that nature. And I thought I had developed that because that is a knot that, that, that happens. Um, 
that develops and so I thought that's what it was. But that's some things you just gotta research and figure out the pros and cons of getting breast surgery um, and asking the questions to your doctor because they're not gonna think to tell you everything because I mean honestly, it's not their job. It's for us to kind of do research on it, but they don't tell you that. So you can develop, develop lumps in your breasts. That's called fat necrosis. And honestly, fat necrosis can actually be anywhere. You got lipo um, in your stomach. Any place where you've altered your body, you can, you can actually get the fat necrosis. Also, with lipo, they don't tell you this, that you can develop lipo lumps. Look it up. Lipo lumps happen when you don't compress adequately and your skin doesn't adhere to your muscle correctly and you get lumps you know, under your life, under your, under your um, skin. That's not fibrosis, I'm talking about lipo lumps. So that's a thing, check that out. I'm not even gonna talk about fibrosis and seromas because we already been through that whole ordeal and that's all tied to you know, your massages and how people are handling your body. You know, it's up to us to protect the investment because when you pay 3K, 4K, 5K, 6, 7, 8, and 10, 11K for your body, you, your aftercare is just as important as that surgery and research is just as important as your aftercare. So, you know, you gotta be really cognizant and think about the after effect, you know? So they don't tell you that. Um, what else has been going on with me that I'm just like, Lord have mercy, help me. Um, when, to take, when to take out your phones. You know, when you're two and three weeks post-op, you can now let go of the phones and the boards. At two to three weeks, or well, I would say three weeks post-op, it's a good idea to be in your stage two faha without your um, phones and without your board. Learned that too. <laughs> because what's happening is now I'm starting to not be numb anymore. And I'm noticing that with those foam foams in, I was like, dang, why am I hurting on the sides of my stage two of my foams? Your body's waking up and it's too tight. Okay? You know, if if, if you put on your garment and it's too and your body hurts, it's too tight. Um when you putting on your faha your stage two faha is supposed to compress you. So that way, if you're gonna tell I'm rocking because I'm hurting a little bit. If you put on your stage two faha and your faha is tight to where it's like snatching your waist, not me in the good way, but when your waist is like cinched, we're not waist training. I hate that term. I'm not gonna lie, I can't stand it, but we're not waist training. What you're doing is you're hurting your skin and you're altering your results. Um, not for the good either. So when you are actually compressing, you're compressing as opposed to just make it so that way your skin is pressed firmly up against your muscle so that that fluid can get in to where that fat used to be that got sucked out. That's it. Um, your results will speak for itself once you're healing. You know, it's all about letting your body do the natural healing, not to alter any results. That's why I don't really like um, wearing tight stuff right now and trying to be on the last, last hook and all of that. No, it's not necessary. My results is going to be fire and they're going to develop on their own. So that's one of those things that, you know, people don't tell you. Cause when you come out of surgery looking for stage two and stage, you know, one fire highs, we trying to find the ones that get your waist this small. And it's like, no, 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 no you need to find one that is your size and not too small. It's okay, to, I not like Fajas that do that cinch down, um, but it doesn't have to be extra tight to where it's like you could sit here like this and can't move. That's not, that's not the point of a Faja, it's not. We're not, so people get it misconstrued. A Faja is not shape wear per se. A fa is a post-surgical device, garment, if you will. And it's supposed to help your skin adhere to your muscle. That's all, and keep fluid down, and keep your swelling down. It's not supposed to shape your body. Your doctor already did that. So, just keep that in mind. Belly buttons. 
they don't tell you about this so your belly button gonna look real crazy like real crazy my belly button is actually healing nicely but i will say that it has a raw feel to it not feel to it look to it it doesn't hurt but you have to keep your belly button dry it's not supposed to be wet your belly button is supposed to be dry so your belly button is supposed to always like it, it, it can look raw but it's not with a non-stick gauze or some type of um garment or some type of fabric that you can clean up not tissue because that sticks but something that's non-stick and can get the ooze or any of that any of that liquid out because that's what you don't want it should be dry today it can dry out um what you don't want to do is uh keep it wet if it starts to do like discoloration or if it starts to to leak other fluids that's not good and your belly button's probably infected so thank god that hasn't happened to me but i'm just saying your belly button has to stay dry what else don't they tell you um it's been just so much i'm like almost i am three weeks post-op today i'm three weeks post-op i thought i was three weeks post-op yesterday i think that's medication talking so i'm three weeks post-op today and um Again, you're up and you're down. Um, you have your good days and you have your bad days. And you need to understand that you are going to be heavier than you were before. Because lymph fluid weighs more than water. And you're going to have water weight and lymph, lymph, lymph fluid weight on you. And, and you're swollen. So getting on a scale right now is probably going to shatter your confidence and shatter the view that you have of your results so don't get on a scale at all um no matter if you are away or local you need to go back for a post-op visit one month after your surgery and another time six months after your surgery um mia thank goodness they they have you under their care for that time period so you can come for free obviously for your one month checkup and then your six month checkup and um be seen so that's one of the things that i just love about mia that i'm able to do that and see that um what else people don't tell you this do not do not use that silicone scar tape I almost use it until I did my research. So that silicone tape is basically for people that skin tends to keloid over. If you pretty much heal okay, leave it alone. Like if you know that you're, if you, if you're looking at your incision and you notice that your, your scabs are looking kind of like they're just falling off and um, it's just like a little scar here Moderma or bio oil can lighten that up with no problem. But what you don't want to do is put a silicone strip over that because sometimes it can worsen your worsen your results and your scars going away. Um, the The whole point of the silicone tape is strips are it's supposed to help flatten your skin where your where your incision is but here's what i've learned through my therapist you don't need that so the moment your incision is completely healed right you just take the skin here and pinch a little bit and just roll it in your roll it because what, what what happens is when you're when under your skin those tissues start to set in and get hard just break it up not hard but just do it this rolling motion you can point you know pinch your skin it doesn't hurt so just keep that in mind do not get those silicone strips not a good idea uh, what else i think that's pretty much it you know i again i have my good days and i have my bad days um but for the most part i've been having some really good ones but today is a day where i am just tired 
um, and you do get mentally tired. Like you can be sitting here, I could be sitting here talking to y'all and that this, this, this kind of took all of my little energy that I had. So um, you do get tired. So when you do get this surgery or have had this surgery or having it like, you know, now or soon, just keep in mind that having a, an amazing support system helps because you have to listen to your body. I don't care if you have energy galore, like, but the moment your energy is depleted, stop and sit down because you don't want to have a setback for real. So I tend to just sometimes just stop. And sometimes I'll just sit here and I'll watch the house, watch everyone moving around me. And no matter how bad I want to get up and I want to do something, I don't, I sit because your body has to rest. Um, I did hit the ground running. I did. I didn't want to sit sedentary too long because I didn't want to not be able to get back into the swing of things. But for the most part, you know, I try to sit down and relax. So just do that. I think I don't have, I don't have anything else. Um, I'm trying to find, find enough energy to do the video to show you what I've been using, utilizing and all of that good stuff. Cause I think my results are pretty good. I think as of right now, um, it's all working out good. So I'll show you my incisions now. Holy God. So now I can actually show you my belly button and how the sides are actually looking. So I'm in my stage two Faha. And this is the one that I got from my nurse Kita, but keep in mind, I do keep mine tucked under because my torso is like, you know, I'm just not there. <laughs> so I keep it flipped under, so that way I'm not altering my results. So let me just show you what I'm looking like. Uh, actually, all right, I won't show y'all my whole naked. Okay, so I'll kind of just show you. So here, I'm gonna get real close and personal. You'll notice that there are some, some scarring, obviously, but it's it's subsiding. This stitch yesterday was the one that was driving me insane, but not so much today. Um, same thing with under the breast. Most of them are actually dissolving. I wonder if I can get a good. Let me see if I can change this view of this light to see if we can make some stuff happen. Not a professional, guys, so be, be patient with me. Okay, much better. Ah, uh -uh, see there? So, starting to actually heal. This stitch right here is the very last stitch that's gonna be dissolving soon. There's not much under here. And then, of course, right here. So, I would not use that biotape because it actually not biotape, that silicone tape. So I'm okay here. You notice here, this is gonna be all the stuff that's coming out from under the bra. So you don't wanna keep this on for more than a day. You wanna keep it washed. My belly button is still doing, not leaking, but it's having, a, it's, it's healing. So it's gonna, so here's my belly button. Maybe I could show you hold on one second let me push this down one notch okay there we go so here i absolutely love where this is going on full transparency here he did an amazing job um most of my stitches are gone here i have maybe one here and then one here and then he did this side, I'm still swollen. You can see bruises, but it's okay, it still hurt. And then here is like a lot of stitches still there, and then here. And so my belly button, oh, so first of all, I like the fact that he went down way below the bikini line, way below. So I got like one stitch there, and then my belly button. So I'll bring this close so you can see my belly button is doing good. I don't touch it with with, with my hands because you know 
if I want to, but, and I was so bent on wanting to get a silicone um, plug that puts in there, but I don't need that. He did a good job of putting it in. I still got my, I still got my mommy stripes, which I'm, I'm down for that. I just didn't want that pooch. I have a lot of um, fluid still here and I'm still, I'm just three weeks post-op. So for three weeks post-op, I think he did an amazing job for, for, for um, three weeks. Um, here, right here, that's still painful. And so that's not fibrosis. That's literally just, um, I'm still swollen here and I can feel that I'm swollen. But when that go down, I like the what I like what he has going on and I like how he molded and sculpted me. So I feel like he did a phenomenal job. Phenomenal. So I like to keep me tucked away. So that way, you know, I'm comfortable. I am on my third hook though with this Faha. And this Faha is an extra large. And before I couldn't even do this. Right now, it's literally effortless just to close it up. I still have give in here. And that's okay, because I did order two Fajas from Snatched Body. I was gonna do Tributo, but honestly, Tributo don't, don't unzip, and I don't really have time for that kind of drama in my life, so I didn't get those kind. But Snatched Body unzips from here all the way back. So honestly, that's what I'm here for. And this is it, this is it. I am very satisfied with my results. I'm only three weeks post-op, and I feel like once my body is done healing and doing what it needs to do, I'm gonna be good. So I'm gonna let y'all go. <laughs> but I just wanted you guys to um, hear from me some of the things you just don't hear and know about. So you do have the times where you can get down because you're like, how did I go into getting surgery and I come out heavier than what I was when I came when I when, when I came out or went in? It's fluid. You're swollen. Trust the process. It's okay to be down. It's okay to be in your feelings, but it's not okay to stay there. Um, just keep in mind that you want to keep the sugars, the caffeines, and the salts down carbonated drinks down still drink and eat as though you were one and two and three days post-op but you do need to eat don't fall back into bad habits so that's it here's my three week result results I'm, I'm i'm satisfied compared to where i was so until next time see y'all